So you want to make Lego animation, but you're like me, and you're too lazy to use real Lego. Well, lucky for you, I'm going to show you how to do it on your computer. Now, unfortunately for you, it's actually no easier than in real life, but I'm going to show you anyways, because I still do it. How we do it is with this little program called Blender. Blender is an open source 3D modeling animating program that you can download for free from the internet. And this is going to be the first part of a larger tutorial where I will show you step by step the entire process from start to finish inside Blender of how I created this Oscar winning animated film. Yeah, this one right here. As a clone trooper, it's my duty to protect the Republic at all costs. And at this digital age, that means protecting my communication signals from enemy separatist radios. Those clankers can never track me now. Thanks to NordVPN. With NordVPN, I can encrypt my data and hide my location so the separatists can't track me down. It's easy to use and compatible with all my devices. Up to a total of six, actually. So I can stay protected, no matter where I am. No matter what comm device I'm using. But NordVPN isn't just for the clone troopers like me. It's for anyone who wants to protect their online information and maintain their privacy. So, whether you're fighting for the Republic or just browsing on the web, give NordVPN a try. Trust me, I'm a commander. I would know. In addition to keeping my communication signals secure, NordVPN also lets me access restricted content and bypass online censorship. As a cloud trooper, I often find myself on remote planets with limited access to information. But with NordVPN, I can connect to servers around the galaxy. I know my online activity is private and secure. And in this day and age, that's more important than ever. So, if you want to protect your online activity and maintain your privacy, give NordVPN a try. Go to nordvpn.com slash owenator to get an exclusive deal on a two-year plan. Plus, four bonus months free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I can't find any reason why you wouldn't. I've commanded Drag, and I approve this message. May the Force be with you. If only they had a VPN for my brain during Order 66. From importing your models to rigging for animation to actually animating to rendering. And we're going to start right now. Before we start though, I just want to say for your own sake, if you're looking at this screen here and you're seeing a bunch of these lines here and you're thinking, what? And you're intimidated by and you look at these menus and you have no idea what any of it means. If you don't know Blender, I would highly recommend that before you start, pause this video and do a little YouTube watching from people who show you the basics. And then from then, if you have that knowledge, we can get going. So let's get going. Of course, you're gonna go to the Blender website and you're gonna download Blender. Install it like you would with any other program. Next place you're gonna go, where to download the actual add-on that we're going to use, mechabricks.com. Mechabricks.com is essentially a community where people can create Lego digitally and they can share the models that they've created with other people and you can download them and yeah it's a cool community but for our purposes we're going to be downloading them for the sake of using them in blender to do this you're going to go to the shop and you we need to download the add-on now there are two versions of the add-on there's the light version which is zero dollars and zero cents or there is the advanced version which is 25 dollars either of these will work i have the advanced because it has extra features such as showing more wear and tear on the bricks, scratches, fingerprints. It just makes them look more realistic when we render them. But the free version will do you just fine starting out. So download that by clicking on the thing, add to cart. Obviously you gotta log in, add to cart, <clears throat> download that and install it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna log in. So click add to cart. You already own this item. Yes, I do. And then how you download it is you go to your thing over here, your profile, you go to purchases and you go to Blender Light, and you click Download. It'll download a zip file, but don't extract the zip. Just leave it like that. Now we're gonna go back to Blender, and we're gonna install this add-on. We're gonna go up to File. We're going to go, actually, it's been moved. We're gonna go to Edit, Preferences, and this is the Add-ons panel, and we're gonna install a new add-on. So we're gonna install. We're gonna go to wherever our zip file is. In our case, it's in Downloads. We're going to double click it and now it's installed but it hasn't fully installed here it is here but we're going to have to check the check mark to properly install it and then you're going to click refresh if you want but it should be now installed so if you x this off 
Then you go over to File, Import, Mecha Bricks. I have two because I have the advanced version installed, but this is the import window that we will be using to import the models that we that we download from Mecha Bricks. I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall it because I already have it on. As of right now, I haven't actually animated my Oscar winning animation yet. So let's start from the very beginning and I'm gonna build the set I'm going to use. Open the workshop at the top and this is our building space where you can build the models or the characters that you want to import. There are different categories and they feature basically close to the full library of bricks that you can think of that exist in the real world. Obviously not all of them, but if you can't find a brick that you need, you just have to adapt and that's the way it is. But there's a lot and you should be alright. Now you have your set. What do you do with it now? Well, we're going to download it. But first, we're going to save. Save, uh, I'm going to call this the control center. And I'm going to save it. Export as, change this to blender add-on dot ZMBX, ZMBX. Whatever part of the world you come from, click export and it'll download as a ZMBX file. Now, we're gonna go back into Blender. You can move that file to wherever you want, of course, but I'm gonna leave it in my downloads. We're gonna go to File. Actually, first, we're gonna delete everything that's currently in the scene. Delete. I clicked X to do that. If you don't already know that shortcut. We're gonna go File, Import. Uh, why isn't it there? All right, so I've just found out that you can't have Blender, Light, and Advanced installed at the same time. Good to know. So make sure you uninstall one if you're going to install the other and remove it. So I'm going to now I'm going to go file import and it's there Mecha Bricks. And we're going to go downloads and I've got a million because I have no idea. Oh, I did name this one. So if you don't name it, it goes untitled, but I got control center right here. Double click that to import. Now we've got our model imported into Blender. And that's pretty cool. You can kind of look around see what it looks like but first thing we're gonna do is delete this little empty actually you don't really have to but it's just a habit of mine I always delete it next thing we're gonna do is if I if you notice if your sets very big if you zoom out it'll clip and it'll disappear this is because these models are actually ridiculously big in the sense of blender scale so we have to scale everything else up to match that I'm gonna go to view and the clip start and end I'm just gonna throw a bunch of zeros on the end of that clipping so that when I zoom out I can zoom out forever and you can still see it which is very frustrating if you don't know why your model is all of a sudden disappearing when you zoom out it's not noticeable on this one because it's pretty small but if you have a bigger model you will notice it immediately and next thing we're gonna do is add a camera this will be the perspective from which we look through at the scene I'm going to add a new collection because I like to be organized in this one cameras because you may have multiple cameras and when we animate I will use multiple cameras and I will show you how and we're going to go to shift A to add camera and your camera is very tiny but that's okay if you click zero on your numpad or if you go to view cameras active camera this is the perspective of the camera and we're going to go back to uh, view here and I'm going to click this this lock this check mark which locks our view to the camera view which means if we start moving around the camera moves around if we have that unchecked and we start moving around we now lose the perspective of the camera as you can see there he is click zero again to go back in our thing check the camera to move around and I'm just gonna look for a nice shot I like the way these kind of lines all lead down towards the chair. You can also turn on um, composition guides. So if you like using the rule of thirds, there you can see the rule of thirds there. Let's put this chair directly in the middle. We're going to zoom in a little bit more. And voila, that's one camera. Let's say we want to add another camera at a different angle. I'm going to go shift A, new camera, and it'll be camera one. Put that into that uh, collection. And we're going to make this the active camera, which you can do by either doing Control-B or going to Object, 
or sorry, view cameras, set act active object as camera. This is our new camera. And we're gonna, if you click on something and you click um, the numpad period, it'll align your, your view to this object. Or you can also do this by going view local, uh, sorry, view frame selected, that one right there. And it'll also make that the center of your rotating rotation, whatever you want to call it. Let's say I want to have a side view of this chair, but I can't because the wall is in the way. If I go past the wall, it's a little bit too close. There's a way we can trick this. In a real life scenario, you would just take the wall down. Obviously, you could just delete the wall, but we want the wall for the other shot. What we can do is make it see through the wall by increasing the clipping on the camera. Just the same way we did with the, with the world view, but we can do this to the camera view. I'm going to throw those zeros onto this in case we wanted to do a wide shot, but the clip start is what it sees first. So if I increase this ever so slowly, eventually the wall will start to disappear. And then I can see the chair. We're going to go back to our original view, view, camera, set ap active object as camera. And we're going to, we're going to render this out, but first we're going to have to add lights. If you're an outside scene, you could throw on an HDRI image or HDR image to simulate a sky, for example, which will give you decent lighting. But for this case, since it's indoors, we're going to have to be a little bit more customized. So what I just did there was I did um, Shift S selection or cursor to selected, which puts our cursor in the, the light bulb. I'm going to make a new collection for lights. And I'm just going to add a point light. I'm going to move it down a bit because it's not quite just in case. If you go into up here on the top right of your 3D view, there's different viewing modes. If you click the viewport shading mode, that'll put us into look dev and we can kind of see what the lighting might look like before we render. Give this time to load and we're going to change it so it uses the scene lights and the world lights. All right. This is future me realizing I forgot to mention something. If you downloaded the light version of the add-on, you probably will not be seeing this. It probably will, it'll probably just be pink. If you just see pink, it's because the light actually doesn't allow you to see in this mode. So to see or to see what you're doing, you can either just use the normal object viewport shading. You could change it to texture, one of these two, one of these things, random single material object texture for example or if you want to see what it looks like when it's rendered I'll move this back to material you can use the viewport shading option which is a lot more stressful on your computer there's no lighting source at all which is why it's so dark there is but it's not powerful enough for us to actually see it and because these models are so big we have to use massive numbers in our power of the light to actually see it so I'm gonna change this to 1 million watts which is extremely bright. You don't necessarily need it to be that bright. So I'll drop this down to 0.2, which should be good, probably a little bit bright still. But we're gonna duplicate this by doing Shift D, GX, so he's around in the center. Shift D, GX again, for that one, Shift GX for this one. So there we have a basic um, lighting setup. Not very good, but that's okay for this. This is not what it'll look like in the end. This does not look very realistic, and that's okay. This is the early preview, essentially. It's a different render engine than what we will use in the end. I'm going to adjust some settings in my camera. One thing that you can do to make your renders look a little bit more realistic is to mimic what happens in real life with depth of field. Open up depth of field, I check that on. I now have the power to use depth of field. If you know what depth of field is, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna make the focus, you can make the focus any of these objects here by just clicking. But what I like to do for more um, freedom, and especially when I'm animating, is to make an empty um, move that empty to wherever you want to be in focus. Shift S, selection to cursor, so it moves the empty to that spot. 
I'll name this focus object. And now I'll go back to the camera and make the uh, focus object our focus object. And now it is focusing on wherever that empty is. And I can move the empty and the focus will change. But you don't really notice anything right now because, again, the models are so massive, the values in Blender have to be as massive as well. In this case, they actually have to be small. So if I change this to 0 0.01, for example, which is probably the lowest I would ever go, that's very shallow. And maybe a little too shallow. I'm going to drop this, bump this up to 0 0.03. And because Lego in real life is so small, depth of field would be a little bit higher than what it might be for a movie with real humans or photography real life size. This is, it's almost like macro photography because of how small Lego is. And that's good for our case. You can see a preview if I click on viewport shading. And this is a lot more, takes a lot more computing power on the computer's behalf because it is the more advanced render engine. I'm gonna turn that off. That actually looks pretty good. Another tip of mine that you can do. In real life, Lego bricks are never perfectly connected to each other. I can make it so that there are small gaps in between the bricks and they're not perfectly placed like they would be in real life. To do this, it's actually part of the add-on. If you open the add-on on this side of the screen, you can click randomize, but first you have to select which objects you want to randomize. But I don't want to select the camera because I don't want to move the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this, restriction toggles, and I'm going to turn on the selectable option. Now I have the option to click this. I'll do it for the lights too, which restricts me from being able to select the, the camera. So now if I click A to select everything, it selects everything except for the things that I don't want it to select, which is perfect. Now I will click back to our camera view and I'm gonna turn off the overlays just so I can see it better. If I click randomize, everything shifts a little bit and I can change the strength here. I can go, to show you what I mean, I can go all the way 100%. That's a little extreme. But if that's the effect you want to go for, that's great. And you could even do it again and to go 100% again to make it even stronger. So I'm going to leave it at around 8%. Seems good. Now, that's everything. I will render out this image. First, let's change some render settings. Over in the render properties, I'm going to change the sampling. I'm going to turn off the threshold. Actually, I'm going to leave that on. Change the sampling not to 4,000. I'll do like 200 performance. I'm gonna use tiling, turn that on. It was already on, but I'm gonna change the tile size to 256. Output properties. And let's say you wanted to do a 2.35 to one aspect ratio. I could change this to like 800, makes it narrower, but I'm gonna leave that at 180 because that's normal 16 by nine. You can change the output of your image the FPS, if you're doing an animation, you can select your FPS. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the compositor tab to set up denoising. Now you could do denoising down here, um, although I feel like sometimes it doesn't work as well, I find. If you go to the compositor, use nodes. We're going to make it so that you don't have to use quite as many samples for it to not look grainy or noisy. And if you're from any of you rendered, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to go to the layer properties and we're going to turn on denoising data, which turns on these three things. We're going to go shift a search up denoise, plop in the denoise node, drag in the normal, drag in the albedo, albedo, whatever. And now this will denoise us, our image for us. We're going to render out our image. I'm going to drop the samples to like 100 just so this goes a little quicker. To render your image, to see what it looks like, go to render image. And give it anywhere between 30 seconds to an hour, depending on how good your computer is. If you want to do really large scale animations, you will need a strong computer. That's just unfortunately how it works. This is our beautiful scene rendered. It was pretty low sample, so it doesn't look quite as good as it could. But as you can see, we have a lot of detail in here. Got some fingerprints on there. If you wanted to, let's say, turn down the amount of fingerprints that you see, you can just go to the Mechabricks tab and turn it down. You can turn it all the way to zero, you can turn it all the way to 100%. And that's gonna conclude it for the first part of this series. In the next 
episodes, we are going to be importing an actual character into the scene. And I'll show you the full process of how to animate a character. I'll show you how to make custom decals. How I make animations, my workflow will be different than a lot of other people's. Hopefully, this helps you. Thank you.